Hi there, this is Caroline here. You can't see my face, but I'm here behind the camera. Um, I wanted to give you some tips about your lino cutter tool that came in your art kit, or if you're not an SAEC student and you ordered one. Um, there's a few tips that are helpful to know about. So this is what it looks like when it's all assembled and the uh, blades are tucked inside the handle in here. You can undo that and they, they all can hide out inside, which is kind of handy. But I've taken one apart completely so that you can understand how all these parts fit together. So um, there's a number of blades inside. Um, I think students that I sent kits to should have a number one blade, a number two, and either a three or a four. This is a three. Uh, you won't find one like this. This is a leaf shaped blade that tends to get used like an X-Acto knife. So I didn't include that because you have an X-Acto knife in your kit. So I'll set this one aside. Um, this one is a five. So it really depends uh, what, I, what blades I had available, but you should all have at least three different kinds of blades and everybody should have a number one. So a number one blade is this little guy. It's quite small. And it has a V-shaped tip so that you can carve lines, okay? Number two is the same shape, but the V is a little bit bigger. So you can carve deeper and thicker lines. This is for areas where you want to remove a lot more material at once. And then same idea goes with the larger, the larger the number, the bigger the blade. This is a number three and the scoop's even bigger. And uh, some of the blades have a V and some of them have a curve like a U on the bottom. This one is starting to look a little more like a U shape. So the bigger they get, they tend to be more curved. So your blades all belong inside your handle when you're not using them, otherwise they'll go missing really quick. And they're not fun to step on, trust me. So I'm just gonna tuck two of them in there and screw my handle back together. And then here's the top. It has just a threaded, there you can see it now, it has a threaded uh, tip and it's kind of inevitable your your parts on these things are going to come apart so you need to know how they fit together so that you can put it back together sometimes your little blade will get stuck in the tip and you don't want that uh, you want to be able to take it apart and get your blade out and then put it back together so so here's the parts so you've got these two pieces, let's put them in my palm, hold them up to the camera. This one is basically shaped like a curve. You can kind of see that there. And it's tapered at the top. And this one has a cylinder in the middle with kind of like a little slanted jacket on the sides. I don't know if you can see that or, or not. And these two guys, they fit together to make one shape. So they fit together like this, like that. So you would take that, you can pinch it together with your fingers and finger and thumb, and then this is the little screw cap that holds it all together. You would put these guys in. You can see there's like a little ball shape at the top there of the inside parts. You would put them in this way into the cap like that so that the little ball pokes out the top. It'll, it'll flop around in there if I move too much, but it's in there. And then you can 
screw this together like so. Now just put it on a little bit and now it's loosely on there. And then your blade, sharp end pointed out, of course, sharp end pointed out because that's the end you're going to use. The curved end that's blunt, that's the end that goes into your tool. And inside your tool, if you look straight down at it, you can see the silver ball shape. And then there's that second piece that creates a little curve. And that little curve has a space between it and the silver ball shape. And that's where you tuck the blunt end of your blade, is in between that silver ball and the silver curve. And then you can tighten it up by screwing down the cap. There it is, your blade is in. Now if your blade goes too far in, sometimes it'll get stuck and then you can just take this whole mess apart again. And if it's really tough to get out, you can just give it a little tap and it should loosen everything up so that the parts come apart. It should, in practice, it, sometimes it doesn't work. There we go. Now it's all come apart again. So just be aware that if your blade gets jammed in there, you just have to take all the parts apart and reassemble them again. Just something to keep in mind so you don't get frustrated with your tool. So I'm just gonna put this all back together again. Put my blade in the in the top here. There it is. Okay, it's good and tight, not too tight, just finger tight. Okay, now this is how you want to hold your tool. If you open your palm like this and then just lay the Lay the end of the handle in the in the middle of your palm like so and then you can wrap your hand around it like that turn it over and your blade the little V when your finger is pointed or touching the tip there your little V should be like like this the V of your blade you want to be carving with the bottom of the V. Okay, now here's a an old block that a student left behind. I'm just going to carve a few lines. This stuff is very, very soft. It takes very little pressure. And it's also kind of um, naturally sticky. It kind of sticks to the table nicely, which comes in handy. Now see, I just went too deep. So you don't want to carve too deep. You want to find the right angle to just carve deep enough to get a line of material coming off, but not so deep that your tool gets stuck in there and then you have to start tearing out chunks like this. You don't want that. So just experiment with what the angle is that works for you to get that nice continuous line. And you can move it around like that turn corners. It takes a bit of practice to know what angle to approach a line at, um, but you have the option to swivel your block around. So you're never stuck with an awkward angle. Very important tip when you're holding your block, because sometimes you'll need to keep it firmly on the table so it doesn't shift, keep your hand out of the path of that blade. If that, if that blade slips, it's really sharp and it will go right into your hand and you will bleed. <laughs> it's not fun. And you might even have to get a tetanus shot. So avoid cutting yourself. If you do have an accident, wash it really well with soap and uh, rinse it out with water and cover it up with a Band-Aid. Make sure you can stop the bleeding. 
if it's really serious, get some attention from a doctor. But I don't think any of you are going to have any unfortunate accidents like that with your lino cutter. Just don't let your kids get into them, okay? Anyways, uh, back to what I was telling you about um, dealing with lines. I'm going to draw a shape here on this on this plate. Just as a sample for you of how I would approach carving something like this. Okay, that's about all the space I have before I run into what the previous person carved already. So let's say that you're just getting started on carving your block and you're like, well, what do I do first? Which area do I carve first? The first thing you always want to do is put your number one blade into your tool and carve the outlines. Um, most people want to leave behind the, uh, the lines, not carve them out. Um, sometimes people want to carve a line out and have a black background. So that would leave you with thin white lines on a black background. But generally speaking, most people want to carve away the white stuff or the, the plain material and leave their design behind. So that's what I'm going to do here. And so you always want to start with the number one blade because it's the smallest. And then you can just carve around the outside shape of the line. So that's the trick is you need to think of your lines as shapes. And the thicker you can make your lines in your design, the easier time you're going to have carving it. So I recommend that you experiment drawing with a, a thicker pencil tip like um, your 2B or your 4B because they're so soft. They kind of grind down to a thicker tip fairly fast and that makes them better to draw with. If you're really struggling to get thick enough lines, you can draw with a Sharpie like this one. This one's blue, but I think the ones in the kits are black. You can draw with a sharpie and they give you a good consistent thick line that's a thickness that is uh, quite appropriate for lino cut design. So I just caught myself, I had my hand in front of where my blade was going. You probably noticed, eh? So you want to always be constantly aware of where your blade is going so that you don't accidentally slip and carve yourself. And I'm also picking up the little bits as I go, discarding them to the side. You're going to end up with a nice little pile of little carved bits. Make sure you throw them out. Don't let your pets eat them. Don't let your little toddler cousin eat them. It's not good for you to eat this stuff. And they just get everywhere. At least it's not as bad as glitter. But it's a good idea to make sure you throw it in the garbage. So you notice that I've carved the outside of the lines and I've carved the inside of the lines and I've so far I've just left these blank shapes or the white shapes in the middle. Um, haven't carved that out yet. So I'll just finish carving the outside lines here and I'm rotating my plate to help me get a good angle. The ergonomics or the angle and posture of your body as you're carving is going to be really important. And you'll want to experiment to see what's most comfortable for you, particularly if you have any mobility issues with your hands or just sitting in general might be hard or painful. You just need to try different things until you can figure out which way your hand moves most naturally. For me, it's this way. This is my most natural stroke when I'm carving. So I'm always rotating this uh, plate so that I get the optimum angle for my strokes. See that? I'm just rotating it to keep my hand at the angle that it likes the most while maintaining a safe distance from the blade with my left hand. These uh, tools are not uh, specific to right or left hand, just so you know. So if you're a lefty, you should be able to do all this in reverse without any problems. I'm just going to finish going around my shape here. 
I don't even know what it is. It looks like a maybe a fish or maybe that's a shark with two fins. I don't know. I was just doodling for you. So here we go. Another trick that some printmakers like to do is they'll color their whole block red and then transfer their design in black so they can see the design on top of the red. But the red makes it so that when you carve away the top of the surface of the block, um, you're left with a very bright white line because the material underneath is showing through. And so it makes it visually easier to tell that you've carved that spot. Um, this block's sort of tinted purple, I'm not sure. Maybe the person was printing with ink that was purple and it stained the block a bit, I don't know. So um, you can kind of see that effect right now that uh, the block is tinted a little bit. And as I carve away, I'm getting these nice bright white lines. So just about done here, I'll carve out this part. One thing about lino cut, it's unforgiving. If you carve something away that's a mistake, you can't put it back. So take your time, don't rush. And sometimes those accidents that happen, you just have to adapt to them and do the best you can to make the design work anyway. Sometimes they're happy accidents and they work in your favor. So now I'm starting to get into some of these interior shapes here. My neighbor is mowing the lawn. You can hear them in the background. Oh, one more interior shape to carve. Okay, so I've carved all the outlines for all my lines, but I'm thinking of those lines as shapes. There's a closer view. You can see what I've done. So at this point, I can focus on carving out the interior shapes in between my lines, and then I can carve the exterior area. And if I want to, if I want it to go a little faster, now that I've got this protective uh, line where I did the outlining, I could switch to a bigger blade without worrying about gouging into my line by accident. It's kind of like a safety measure to have a really accurate outline carved because then if your big blade slips a little bit, you've got a buffer zone there. So I don't think this is uh, big enough to warrant a bigger blade, um, but uh, you may have some larger areas that require a large blade to make it more efficient for you. And you'll notice also as you're carving that you end up producing some really pleasing repetitive patterns of like wavy lines and stuff. And sometimes there's subtle little gaps in between them. And that'll create a really cool texture that will probably show up when you print. And that is part of the charm of lino cut is having that uh, lino cut texture show up in your print. You can see the hand of the artist who made it in every stroke and that's really appealing. Anyhow, you can see that I'm just working my way through the space in the middle here and I don't want to make you watch for too much longer. I will do a time-lapse video of carving on one of my projects. But I just wanted to give you a sense of the order to do things. So you start with the outlining, then you do your interior shapes, then you do your exterior area, potentially with a larger blade if you wish. So I think that's it. I, I will say a couple words about this material. This is soft cut. Um, which is really easy to carve and is generally what we use for students who are just learning to do lino cut. If you're really enjoying the lino cut process, you can get a, a lot tougher material. It's like the linoleum that they make flooring out of um, and it carves really nicely. 
um, and you can do that with these tools. And then there's also um, the option of buying yourself a small set of hand chisels, which I may show you in another video. Um, you have to keep them sharp, so you have to learn how to sharpen them on a sharpening stone and hone them on a le leather strop uh, with some honing compound. Um, and you keep them good and sharp and then they'll serve you really well. And they can carve uh, the harder linoleum beautifully, like butter. Um, and they can also carve wood blocks. Um, so that gets into the realm of woodcut printmaking, which is a really beautiful art form but can be harder on your hands and harder on your wrists and requires um, more professional tools. So you wouldn't carve a wood block with these guys. They're just not tough enough and they don't stay sharp long enough. So for, for now, we're gonna stick with this soft cut material. Um, if you wanted to try some of the harder stuff down the road, you can get that at uh, the art supply store. And one little trick that I'll share is if you like the softness of this stuff, but you like the accuracy of the harder linoleum, um, that's one of the uh, pluses of using the harder material, is that you can get these really sharp, accurate lines, whereas this stuff's a little softer, sometimes it crumbles a little bit, or it's a little floppy or whatever. Um, the harder stuff you can get really accurate designs with, um, but it's harder to carve, and a little trick that I learned is to get a little warming plate, um, maybe at a thrift store, and you just lay your lino on there for a minute or so to warm it up and then grab it off there and carve some more and it just carves like butter. So that's a little tip for you if you wanna try harder linoleum down the road. Okay, so I think that's everything you need to know about the lino cut tool and getting started on a carving. I will talk about how to plan your design and how to transfer your design to your block in another video. Thanks for watching.